Welcome back to Trinidad and Tobago. And as you know, we have been following the developments out on the sister isle and the budget was delivered yesterday. Major stakeholders have already started commenting on what exactly took place. Let's share with you the presentation by Joel Jack. Madam Presiding Officer, the recurrent estimates for fiscal 2021 total $3.07 billion. Disaggregated personal expenditure, $840.9 million. Goods and services, $1 billion. Minor equipment purchases, $90.7 million. And transfers and subsidies, $1.1 billion. The finance secretary said the recurrent expenditure estimates for fiscal 2021 is 191 million less than the 2020 figure. He went on to give a breakdown of the estimates, noting that the lion's share of the budget went to the Division of Health to address COVID-19 related issues. Assembly legislature, $24.8 million. Office of the Chief Secretary, $167.4 million. Finance and economy, $291.7 million. Food production, forestry and fisheries, $276.5 million. Tourism, culture and transportation, $234.7 million. Education, innovation and energy, $525.6 million. Community development, enterprise development and labor, $118.4 million. Infrastructure quarries and the environment, $475 million. Health, wellness and family development, $811.7 million. Settlements, urban renewal and public utilities, $41.2 million. And sport and youth affairs, $104.9 million. The secretary also outlined the THA's request for the island's development projects. The estimates of expenditure and development program for fiscal 2021 amount to $1.5 billion, an increase of $75.1 million from the fiscal 2020 request to the central government. Jack is also requesting $71 million for the Unemployment Relief Program and $43 million for the Community-Based Environmental Protection and Enhancement Program. In fiscal 2020, the THA requested $4.72 billion. However, it was allocated $2.62 billion, or 4.3% of the national budget, under the Dispute Resolution Commission's provisions. It also received $987.1 million for off-budget expenses. Camille McKechnie, CNC3 News, Tobago. And that's a story there about uh, what was presented. And the THA Chief Secretary, Ansel Dennis, says he is comfortable with the $4.71 billion fiscal package presented by Secretary of Finance and the Economy, Joel Jack. Now, he said the package presented to the, to the needs or represented the needs of Tobagonians. And Dennis said while the island might not get the entire sum requested, the THA would utilize what is given to ensure that priority projects are completed within this fiscal year. But of course we have a responsibility to submit draft estimates which represents what we think are the needs of the people of the Bigo at this time. So when the time comes and we are located, what we are usually accustomed to, which is somewhere around 4.03% of the national budget, to ensure we give priority to the most important years. And also continuing with uh, stories coming out of Tobago, the THA minority leader Watson Duke says the budget estimates presented by Finance Secretary Joel Jack is putting the country in further debt. Now speaking after, to the media after the three hour long speech, Watson Duke said Jack made a compounded bad decision. He said there are no plans for generating revenue for Tobago. It means, therefore, that the budget that you read to you was not properly thought out and that the PLM plan has failed because they have gone now from talking nice talks as if it is the good times to talking talks 
that people will question. How? What are the plans for generating revenue? Revenue that will match the expenditure. He said the budget estimate was a rehash of past estimates and it's simply putting the country in further debt. We already have a national economy that is in debt by some $10 billion. He wants to put Tobago now in a position where we must be in debt, an island debt of $4.5 billion because all that they can make is of our revenue. It's about two. Hundred billion dollars, million dollars. Something is wrong with that. Duke is scheduled to respond to the budget at a special sitting that is going to take place on Thursday. Well, joining us on the line at this time, we have Diane Haddad. Diane Haddad is the chair of the TNT Chamber, the Tobago uh, section of the chamber, and she's joining us to give us the response whether the major stakeholders are truly satisfied with that four point seven billion dollar package that has been presented. Ms. Haddad, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Hima. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm fine, thank you. Mike, let's get straight into it. The highs and the lows. Were you satisfied with what you heard from the finance secretary? Well, to be very honest, it wasn't very much that we heard other than it was a lot of information hidden in a lot of fluff. And it would have taken some time to actually get to the meat. Or if there was very much meat in there, it was a lot of listening. But the content we found to be very shallow. Um, further to which, I must share with you that it was the most disheartening time I ever had with a management team and the members of the chamber, in that most people did not even take the time to listen. And when we were to, to shred it apart, they were all dejected, they weren't too concerned, other than they felt totally disgusted by the fact that the economy continues to be where it is. And so that, for me, was a big message that the private sector is really not happy and the private sector, which is sad, is losing confidence or has lost confidence in the ability of the assembly to actually deliver. So let me put that out there. It was one of my hardest meetings to get any content out of it. So you thought it lacked substance and lacked content. So how then... Well, the content, Ima, was hidden in a lot of talk. And it would have really taken... It was not... So it means that there isn't anything substantial for you to say if you have to talk all of that fluff in order to get to something. Because a lot of it was what we did and what we did and what we did. We are presenting or supposedly doing a wish list or an ask for the year to come. Mm -hmm. And if that is the case, then all of what we did and what we did and what we did is really not so relevant as what we did actually showed that the economy has crashed, which we are saying for the longest time. Now, I see that Varnish James has said the budget has told a chilling tale of economic decline in COVID. I know we have spoken extensively about what has happened in Tobago in 2017. Tourism was 14% of Tobago's economy. In 2018, it's 13%. Uh, it means that 14% of the larger economy, which was at that time, we still don't know the overall impact. So let me talk about commerce, tourism, and revenue generation, those three things. Did you think the budget passed the mark on those three items after you dissected what was presented? No, because um, even in having a short conversation with Vanas yesterday, what was, I mean, as I said to Vanas, I said, Vanas, your comparisons are still to good years, but if we went back, as he did it to 2012, but if you went back to 2008, 2005, where we had our 88,000 international arrivals, this figure will probably be about 40% in terms of the fall or could be higher. So let us be clear that when we are comparing, we need to compare it to our best years. And we've been speaking about this for the longest while. We go back for a recurrent expenditure of 3.071 billion. We have increased capital expenditure to 1.5. The URP and CPEP is 71 and 43, respectively. But let us look at Tobago has never gotten 4. Point anything billion. Mm -hmm. At best, Tobago gets what is required by law. And why do we continuously ask for this 
when it is not coming. So it is almost as if we are wasting time and we are not living in the real world. We are not living in the real moment. And how do you fix anything, Nima, if you don't accept what the truth is? The best way to fix anything is to get to the truth. These numbers, also brought out by a couple of the members, in 2015, September, the taxes collected on the island was 278 million. But in 2018, it's 204 million, which means there was less business being done. And for your tax revenue to fall to that figure, I'm, I'm certain it's dropping considerably as we go along. Where's the money going to come from to generate all of this new um, business that we want to do? Further to which we keep speaking about borrowing 300 million that we have the ability to win two bonds or whatever. Mm -hmm. Where is it coming from? Is it that somebody has money that we don't know about and they would need to tell us, the business community, how to get it? Now, looking at the way forward, if we are hoping to get out, because you are right, that's a wish list. You do not know in the end what the allocation is going to be. Considering what you have seen so far, I don't get the impression that you think the major issues of, let's say, uh, addressing tourism and moving the sector forward and generating revenue in particular will move forward. So what is going to be the faith of Tobago for the next six months to a year? Um, Hima, that is really a tall question, but I have encouraged and continue to encourage our private sector. And I think this is where the country, not just Tobago, I want to put it there, the private sector in this country needs to come together in a serious force to really bring the economy back in line. I really, at this stage, and I've seen the, the apathy and the disgust, the disdain in the faces of all the business people that met yesterday, um, I really think that the business community needs to come together and forge their way forward. I think they have to take some measure of control in terms of what government has been doing over and over year on year. Um, I know that there are many aspects of that statement that would be slapped around because there are many people who benefit through whatever favors and so, and friendships that they become beneficiaries of contracts and so. But I think they have also seen that when an economy is not, not moving around you, even those favors are hard to come by. And therefore, we need to get to reality and get to the real crux of the matter of running our economy in the real honest way of development through movement, consumption, manufacturing, the production, and those areas that we have totally failed in. And until we get a leadership team that is serious about that, I know the private sector will buy into it. I know the private sector is not wholly all great and honest in what they do, but I'm certain that there are enough of us to take this thing forward if we have a real leadership team who understands economics for all and not business or sorry, let me change that because that's not business either. Let's call it money for some. Does the so, private sector have the capacity to, you know, the way that our economies are structured, the government is the facilitator and driver of growth. That, that has been traditionally what the model of the Trinidad and Tobago economy has been. Does the Tobago element, let's say Tobago commerce, ha do, do you have what it takes to switch that around and actually be the driver of growth and be the engine that is required to restart that economy? Well, over the years, Hima, there's been an organized formula that has brought the economy to 70% about 70, they claim 70 now, but it's 72, and I'm not moving from 72% of your employment through government. And because of it, it's become very dependent. And if that is the case, then they themselves have orchestrated destroying the ability of the private sector. But I'm certain if there is a proper facilitation process, I'm certain the private sector and many of even the government employees will get out there and do some magic because there is a lot of talent. And my question always is why are we holding back our human capital development and people's talent? 
what is it about this thing that we want control? Is it because we don't have confidence in ourselves to actually lead properly? And so the only way to do it is to keep people suppressed. So, uh, the, the talent resides, I know that. The risk taken, I know there are enough people here who will take the risk. I know the bankers have the history where they know that the talent was here all the time. The truth is the government bodies need to remove themselves from what they have done to the development of the people on this island. So whether the private sector has it or not, there is a section of the private sector that has it, and I think the rest will be willing to move along. I don't think we don't have talent. Our country is full of talent. You know, we had a conversation um, recently in one of, our, one of my nightly shows um, about the Tobago economy, looking at a number of reports that came out. The THA continues to be the custodian of the funds for the particular um, budgetary allocation. Considering all of the mistakes of the past, do you think that the current structure of persons who are filling the positions will be able to break the mistakes of the past or correct the mistakes of the past? I'm not sure what you mean by the current structure. Well, the people, people, the people who are there. Let's say that they, well, it's the same structure, but the people are changed. Well, let me say something, Ahima. It's always about the people. We can do what we want. It's always about not just the ability, but more importantly, the honesty and the goals and intentions of the people in leadership and are, are involved. And as I said, even the recovery roadmap team even there, that was, as I said in an interview with you previously, even that team came down to your present chief secretary on the Tobago channel, making a statement that they are putting only people born in Tobago on the community. And that got even worse because people born in Tobago who were asked to be on it, who are not of a particular complexion, were picked off. So it only sent a signal that something else is wrong. And what is wrong? We need to get to the crux and deal with the truth. What is our problem? Why are we rejecting each other? What it is in terms of our fair factor, that is a personal or party issue, where we are not engaging and actually respecting and enjoying the intellect and intelligence of others who have contributed for free for a very long time. So, and your closing comments on this, because we know that the debate continues on Thursday. Uh, the politicians will now have their two cents. We are still, this is an election year in terms of the general election. We know that uh, one of the political parties have said that they are not going to be contesting the Tobago seats, but we do have factions in Tobago as well as the incumbent. What do you want to say uh, on this issue of Tobago and the economy? Well, I would like to put out there that we have a number of businesses who had invested here, they were Trinidad-based and had offices here, and they have closed. They have taken the decision to close. And in the best interest of our country, I appeal to our leaders to start in the right direction and do the right thing for our people. You are holding us back. You have destroyed our economics, and this cannot continue. Other than that, I guess there will be some sort of failing that they will experience themselves in their personal lives because this is not the God's way of doing leadership. Thank you very much, Eva. Thanks so much, Ms. Haddad. I do appreciate you taking the time to speak with us this morning on the Tobago issue. We take a short break, and when we come back, yesterday in the parliamentary chamber, the Attorney General discussed domestic violence. Are major stakeholders satisfied that enough is being done? Well, from the Law Association to the Coalition, several speakers in the Senate yesterday did have a number of issues that they raised, including whether or not vulnerable groups, particularly vulnerable groups, were well protected. Stay with us. There's so much to discuss.